So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's kind of always awkward to be in between the lunch and, and, and you, but you know, bear with me. So first of all, let me introduce myself very quickly. My name is Tatu Tahkokallio. I'm the CEO of New Hype Media. We are a startup media. Uh, we've been live for two months, so you know, our you know, past is not, or the history is not there, but you know, soon will be, I hope so. And in fact, we're not only from Finland, we're actually from many places around the world. We've got people uh, in Estonia here in Tallinn. We've got people working for us from um, Denmark, uh, you know, Tokyo, many parts of the world. So you know, it is just explaining and showing how much international, um, you know, or how international and, and, uh, and global the starts I've seen in general is. Now, what I want to talk about, and I was just listening to the discussion here, I thought, you know, why would you know, something like this interests you guys. But I just realized that, you know, the startup scene and the challenges the star startups have are exactly what we cover. So maybe there is a, um, a point that you can, you know, take with you after, after what I have to say. Now, I'm going to discuss, I'm, I'm going to come to this from the point of view, you know, how about a media? How does a media live and work um, in this new society where the startups are so strong and how can we make business out of that and how can we survive. So, let me take this clicker. So, there's a few points I was thinking I'll, I'll cover. The first one is about business models and I think it's exactly what you just dis discussed, you know, how difficult it is to get in, in, in the eyes and in front of the customers, in front of the consumers, in front of the audience. Uh, media has exactly the same challenge, you know, it doesn't matter what creative content you have. So, to sort of uh, give you an idea how the media is actually, you know, tackling these challenges, let's take a very quick note from um, Ariana Huffington, who's actually the founder of Huffington Plus. So, if you can post, if you can just run the video very quick. I don't think there is one business model. I think there are going to be multiple business models. I mean, the New York Times business model uh, includes a paywall, and it has been very profitable for them. It has definitely um, arrested their scale in terms of how they could grow digitally. Um, but uh, it has, as a business, it has been very successful. The Huffington Post is entirely free, um, but we have um, um, we have done an amazing job in native advertising and sponsored content. And that's really where we bet the future, um, not on uh, CPM-based uh, banner ads, etc. I think that's a declining uh, revenue source. I mean, still a revenue source, but declining. So I guess, you know, the, the realization that we came and we, we, we are, you know, all tackling, but at least, at, you know, in particular with the media, the fact that one size does not, fit, does not fit all. And that's not exactly what we've been trying to do. Um, so what we are as hype trying to sort of uh, make, ma make out of that is, you know, apply a couple of different kinds of business models. I think the advertising will definitely be there um, to come. Of course, the advertising is changing. There's the guaranteed and there's the real-time bidding, uh, programmatic, you know, buying of the ads. And of course, that's also challenging because the price are going down. So, you know, how can you make business out of that? Remains to be seen, but it will definitely be there. Subscriptions, like Ariana was pointing out, New York Times is doing that. I think we're going to be seeing us doing that as well. So subscriptions in different formats. Uh, you know, it could be that you subscribe for our TV series. It could be that you sub sub subscribe for something that very, very specific, um, you know, content that is exactly, you know, value for you. Um, but then also, you know, and that's more the, the consumer side. But I think there's also opportunities for media to do subscriptions on the B2B side. So, for example, the content could be actually sold to a lot of corporates and you know, be utilized by their employees. So I think that's one great example too. Then of course, on the content side, Ariana was talking about the native content and the, uh, uh, the sponsored content. Um, that, that's been in rise in terms of revenues around the world with many media, in particular on the US. Um, and, um, and I think that's something that you know, we should also do. And there's no you know, wrong in doing that. Of course, you need to separate journalistic content from the you know, more 
sort of uh, advertised, advertising based content or marketing content. But you know, it doesn't mean that they need to be bad. You know, both can be very, very good. And I think there's a lot of value. Then um, one of the big things in terms of business models that we haven't really, you know, not truly explored yet, but I think that has to do with big data. And this could be something interesting, you know, maybe for you as well, you know, whatever you're doing, whether we're talking about longer films or shorter films, but it is actually the, the content and the consumption of the content that creates a lot of data related to usage, related to the value, uh, that could be, you know, taken further. And I think that's one of the very big things, things for us. So trends, uh, targeting consumers better based on that data, and, and of course, uh, propensity to pay in general, you know, that you can draw out of that data could, could be a lot of value. So the next thing um, I wanted to talk about and point out, let's see if I can click this, here we go. Um, what about the forms of content? What's going on in that from? So let's take a look at what um, Neil Murray has to say about that. So I think there are three ways that traditional journalistic content is being challenged right now. Um, the first of those is through the, the increase in data journalism. They provide fact and they provide something to build the story on. So people are preferring to, to read data-driven stories than they are more opinion-based stories. Um, the other one I see is the, 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 the challenges to traditional content who have previously used kind of listicles um, or just pieces which drive traffic. So, of course, I'm, I'm talking about BuzzFeed mainly here, those types of sites. I've now shifted to a longer form content. Um, and finally, I see an increase in interactive content. Um, the New York Times have been particularly good at this recently, um, doing kind of an interactive what's happening in Greenland. And essentially, as you're scrolling down, um, the, the graphics are moving with the page and you're kind of immersed in the content. So I think these are the kind of three shifts that we've seen in the last year or so. So for us at Hype, um, clearly the new forms of content are important. And you know, guess what? What's the most important you know, by far? Surprise, surprise, it's video, video, video. So video content in our mindset is absolutely critical you know, moving forward. And I think, you know, it was interesting to listen to what, what was just discussed about the, you know, the, how the videos and the films are coming shorter in, you know, in length. The, the shorter videos are actually very, very important. There's a lot of demand for, you know, inventory around shorter videos. Uh, and if you look at the, you know, how rapidly YouTube has grown and how important that is in terms of completely opening up new channels, uh, it, it's just incredible. So video content for us is absolutely important. And it's not only about shorter stories, it's about also TV series, maybe you know, repackaging those, creating very rapidly uh, content sort of um, uh, you know, bundles, if you like, uh, that are relevant to exactly you. So you know, we need to be able to do these sort of things. Then of course, there's uh, other kinds of content which are also derived from the usage. And so there's a lot of data points that can be utilized, like Neil was talking about. So kind of a top 100 lists um, could be, you know, deals, what are done on, on the startup scene because we're covering that. Uh, could be, you know, what are the investors doing and how are the, you know, entrepreneurs doing with their different kinds of uh, ventures. So there's a lot of data that can be created. And I think that's another new form of content, at least, you know, important for, for us. And then the gameplay. Uh, you know, I think gameplay is coming in many forms into the usage of the content. I think that's exactly also what that we see, you know, with the gaming industry uh, getting closer to, um, you know, the film industry and, and all of that. So there's a lot of things that can be done. And, and uh, maybe as a last point in terms of the new formats of the content, that's really becoming huge. And I just, I was experience, experiencing that myself um, just in Slush last week. Uh, it's the virtual reality. And it's incredible. It's just incredible you know, all of a sudden looking at content where you can actually, you know, look around you, feel people coming around you, uh, you know, surprising you. So the virtual reality, once that becomes really mainstream, which it isn't really today, but will soon be, you know, can make a big, big um, sort of an impact on how the content is consumed. So the third point, which I think is relevant for all of us, is, of course, well, how do we, need, how do, how do we reach our audiences? So... We have a little clip to, to hear what Jonathan Forster is saying about that. And a friend of mine in Germany was telling me, one of, he worked at Axel Springer, one of the big yeah. German publishing houses. And so this would have been about 10 years ago. 
if a journalist's work didn't make it into the magazines, they'd rather throw it in the bin than put it online. Like, that's, that's how, crazy. and that's not long ago. <laughs> yeah. um, and you know, now it's obviously very different. The, the really cool thing about publishing or being a media or being a con content creator for that sake is of course that you, know, you, you can actually reach audiences with that content. I think it's, it's something that it, it's just it's one of those drivers behind all of us. Um, but we also need to you know, keep in mind that it is challenging to get those people in front of that content. And I think the first thing that really comes into play, which is never you know, of, of, you know, less important is the fact that you need to have a brand. So brand is always, you know, a big driver for good content. And it will bring your audiences closer to you, you know, whether the brand is Steven Spielberger or whether that brand is, you know, Nike. So the, the brand plays an important role. So we need to foster, we need to make sure that the brand is built uh, in, in a, you know, with this, creates a solid base for the brand, and that's something that, of course, as a media, we're also trying to do. And of course, hype.com, you know, fourletters.com, it's fairly easy to drill in in people's mind, but it will take time, and you need to be patient. The second thing, of course, um, related to reaching your audience is about channels. Well, you know, what are you, you going to use as channels? And I think that's also, you know, what, what I was just listening to. Uh, earlier here, you know, how, how can you reach your audience? It's, 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 a, it's a very, very tough question. And in our mind, you know, being a media ourselves, of course, no question about that. Online, very important. We need to, be res we need to have a responsive side. It's surprising how many, for example, TV programs today that, that we watch on TV don't have a responsive side, you know, let alone a site at all. You know, maybe, you know, there's a brand and maybe it's associated with that TV channel, but you can't find a site for that program. Of course, that's not true for the, you know, the Hollywood movies, but, you know, how come that's possible? So you, you need to have a responsive site. You need to have an application. That's another thing. Applications drive value. There's a lot of opportunities with in-app purchases, things that you can do at, uh, around the applications, and, and brands and content have to go to the applications. So, and applications are not only, you know, the mobile. They're not in your tablet. It's also things like the TV boxes. You know, Apple TV, for example, is driving towards applications. So you know, the moment you download the app to your phone, it's also available then on that you know, set-top box. So these kind of things are absolutely critical. Um, and then third thing you can't you know, forget is marketing. Now what's, what's new, really, in my mind, um, when I say publishing equals marketing, it, it's not about you know, marketing, marketing just for the sake of marketing, but it's, it's marketing for the sake of grabbing your audience and grabbing your audience in real time. Because your audience is not necessarily with your own assets. They're not necessarily you know, standing in your, your site or they're not necessarily having that application in, your, you know, in, in their mobile. But it's about grabbing that audience in real time. So let's say that we're just about to publish a new video clip and right at that very moment when we say publish, we should be able to grab the audience for that. And it means you know, having the means to, to go out to those forums, go out to those sites, go, sites, go out to those applications that, that that particular exact targeted audience that you want to grab are using at that moment. And that's not a trivial task. That's a lot of technology, but it's same technology used in marketing. Hence, publishing equals marketing. Then maybe... Um, Maybe the, um, uh, the, the, the challenge here really is not only technology, it's not only skills, but it's a mental challenge that we need to overcome. The last point that I wanted to raise is really, well, so if, if you can tackle these things, if you can tackle your, you know, ha reaching your audience, if you can tackle the different content formats, and if you can really tackle uh, you know, all of these challenges, how do you do that? And of course, it means getting a real good team. So let's hear what Guy Kawasaki has to, t has to say about you know, building a team for thriving you know, startups. The, the core of the team, of course, is two people. You know, one person to build it, one person to sell it. Laws and jobs. Uh, and that's kind of, you know, the essence of entrepreneurship. Somebody's got to make it. Somebody's got to sell it. It is that simple. 
Is it that simple, really? But yeah, I mean, it should be. You don't need an army to get things out today. You don't need, you know, a full bureaucratic organization around you to get your message out or your content out to the consumers. There's so many opportunities. It's just incredible. There are so many tools. There are so many services that you can actually take into use with relatively you know, small amounts of money today. And none of these didn't exist 10 years ago. But, and here comes the but, how to do that? And my mind says that, well, what do we need from those two people? Or maybe it's five, or maybe it's 10, but what do we need from those two people? The first, utmost important thing is agility. Agility to really, you know, take the unconventional routes to the, uh, you know, wh whatever you're trying to pursue. Um, be able to change course, be able to um, have, you know, keep the vision, but not stick with the old ways of doing things. But rather, try new, you know, maybe fail, try again, fail again, and hopefully eventually find a conclusion and a way forward. The second thing about the team and what, what the team really should be like is they need to be business-minded. And this is, of course, a very tough ch you know, challenge for a lot of creative people. Being business-minded sounds like making money. But, you know, there's nothing wrong with about making money. Uh, it is about making sure that you can go forward, invest again, do new things, and, and, and maybe prosper while do, doing that. The third thing, of course, for us as a media is making, you know, important is to make sure that we got, we got talented people. We need talented journalism or journalists. We need talented you know, partners. We need even talented data scientists. We need talented front-end develop and developers. We need you know, all kinds of people in, in, in our team contributing. Maybe not all of them are in our own payroll, but we need to have that talent and those skills around us. And that's also very different from, from the past. You know, it's not just that you, know, you have kind of siloed um, you know, big groups of, and teams helping and working for you, but it is about having the agility, having people with multiple you know, disciplinaries of, of talent and, and be able to use them. So maybe um, you know, th that's, that's where we are today, and that's exactly how challenging this is. So I hope that some of these thoughts you, know, you can take with you and maybe apply to your business. Um, but you know, the world is open. It's all yours. Go get it. Thank you.